This week on Elkara Ham Radio, we're going to continue the cross band repeater build. This is part five. We've got to make some brackets so that we can mount those two radios inside the cases. Come along as we continue the project. This week on Elkara Ham Radio. angle and screw that down here and then have them pop riveted on and that way we'll have them so and as ac4dm begins to explain those brackets we're also looking at some thermal switches so that the fan that we're going to have inside the case will come on automatically once the temperature gets a little bit warm i think we ended up getting some switches that are supposed to come on around 95 degrees. That would be 35 for you folks outside of the United States. Anyway, we're looking at the overall makeup. Now, this is one of the kits that we have pretty far along, but not completely finished, and we've got to create some additional brackets and things. We were looking also for some quick disconnects for power. Don has a few of those, uh, but those really won't work for our purposes. So we, uh, Don starts looking in his trusty parts guide that uh, it looks a little bit worn for wear, but he's uh, been ordering parts out of a similar book for years and years from various sources. Now what we're testing here is a thermal switch. This was one that I think may have or he may have already had. We're checking to see if it will actually open. And you can hear that piercing tone in the background. It wasn't working for what we needed, so we needed to order some more, which we'll see a little bit later. Now we begin to measure for these brackets. Now, Don had a couple pair of these that we could mount two radios, as you saw there, but we needed to make some more, and trying to find those with dual radio mounts was difficult to find. Also, we were coming up with ideas of how to mount the Bieno battery inside the uh, case, so we, we had a temporary measure at the moment, but uh, these batteries are going to work out a treat in those cases. And again, thanks to hamsource.com. Those of you looking for pieces and parts, batteries and whatnot, hamsource.com. They helped us out a little bit, but we bought all of the equipment. None of this, except for one, I think, system monitor was provided to us. So we paid for all of this. KY4 CKP helped us buy some additional Apache cases from our friendly Harbor Freight. So as you can see, things are coming from a variety of sources to put this crossband repeater project together. And remember, we're building seven of these. Now we get back to creating those brackets. And of course, with AC4DM's tool chest, we've got all kinds of tools available. Plus, he's got aluminum stock that he's had or that he has pilfered from various other side projects or maybe just people getting rid of material. So here we're doing some measurements and markings, and we're going to have to ultimately mark this up for, I believe, okay. uh, six pair of the brackets, maybe five pair of the brackets. And uh, KD6FTR is marking this, uh, we'll call it aluminum stock for now, and in uh, three inches wide, four inches in height ultimately. Now you can see the rectangles there on the top side that we're ultimately going to be cutting out. That'll give us the five pair that we need. Just go line to line because this here may be just a yeah. head off where it was cut across. Yeah, there, but, you know. but this is so. So out comes the reciprocating saw and uh, KD6FTR goes to work cutting out the various uh, pieces that we're going to need. And uh, this is what's so wonderful about our club is... Uh, having Elmer's like AC4DM and some of the others, we had several folks uh, provide additional materials. KY4EAR uh, had an old project with some of the, the wood that we're using or particle board that we're using for the base where these radios and batteries and so forth are going to be mounted. Mike continues to use the uh, saw here to continue cutting out the various pieces that we're going to need. And as we go through this video, you'll see how we're going to put these together and then uh, all the various tools. So far, we've put two tools to work <laughs> in this video. It's 
great to be able to see how this fabrication comes together. And again, some people have a mind for this, especially if they've built things in the past. AC4DM used to work on engines back in the 60s when muscle cars ruled the world. All right, so there's our first piece of aluminum that we're going to be using for one of the uh, the radio mounts. And here we're utilizing a band sander uh, to uh, take off the rough edges. That aluminum can be extremely sharp. And what we're going to do is take off the corners and, again, get rid of any of those burrs that sometimes are created with that saw. Remember, we're going to be doing five pair of these. So Mike's got his work cut out for him. Even with a steady hand, you're going to get some burrs and some rough edges. So now we can see one of the pieces finalized, and we just have to do a bunch more. So here you can see that Mike is still using the sander here, and he's also going to take off those corners so that, again, those won't reach out and cut you open. It's just great having tools like this readily available. So now we can see uh, one of the pieces here laying up against the original piece. You can see it's almost identical. It's just not painted black. The next thing we need to do is create the bottom piece, the elbow, if you will, or the 90 degree. And we're going to put the flat piece that we just created with these to create a stand or a mount for the radios. So here we're going to take our bandsaw and we're going to cut these pieces. And just like that, we've got two. And I imagine we did that several times. So here you can see we've got several of them. These pieces are going to go together with the flat stock. So now KY4CKP is going to use the sander as well on these pieces to take off the rough edges and some of those really sharp corners. And there's five sets of these, again, that we're going to use for the, uh, think of them as the uh, mounting bracket feet that we're going to use with the other stock, and we're going to have to put those two pieces together, which uh, we're going to do here in just a few moments. Again, having the right tools is so much fun. Makes projects like this go even faster and allows you to, again, fabricate things that you may not be able to find easily online or at your favorite store. Now we're going to take the two pieces and what we've done is we've already drilled a hole through both pieces. Don has a pneumatic air-based riveter. So and bad. sure enough, so those two pieces are now put together. Now, it's not the only one. We're going to put two more in there so that they don't turn on each other. But Lightning. isn't it awesome that Don has an air riveter that makes that job of putting these two pieces together so easy? Next, it's time to put the other two holes in the two pieces. Now that these two are, are riveted together, we can go ahead and make sure they're aligned properly and then use the portable drill press here to create the other two holes and yet another tool brought to bear on this project. We're hoping all these different tools that we show you in the videos gives you some food for thought on uh, maybe future purchases for projects that you might want to uh, put together. And here we have the final piece. Remember, we've got nine more of these, I believe it was, to create, but there's all that work and effort that we put into it. We have our own brackets. We still have to put holes in the, uh, the, the longer piece of stock there for the radio mounts themselves, but now we have all of the pieces put together. This was all done on an impromptu workday at El Cara. Now, on another workday, we came back and we wanted to test out some thermal switches that KD6FTR had ordered, and uh, Don took a heat gun to the switch. Sure enough, the fan came on, and then after about two minutes after it had cooled off, the fan went off, and that's exactly what we want. The next idea, though, was where do we mount the thermal switch itself? Now, Don's done this before, but he's just kind of showing us, since we're all greenhorns, uh, where we could mount uh, mount the thermal switch, for instance, on the heat sink. Where you see a lot of that heat sink coming out of the back of the radio, that's where the the amplifier is, where a lot of the, the heat is generated. 
Now we're also shoring up or just aligning the radios in general with the brackets that were created. Kind of get an idea of where those holes need to be, but we'll need, need to do a few more measurements. And Don, of course, has a way to make that easier. With some painter's tape, he starts marking center to center holes with his uh, square there. And then where the lines meet ultimately are where we're going to draw our first set of holes. Will they be exact? They'll be close. They'll be really close. We may end up taking a file to some of these just to elongate the hole a little bit so that the uh, mounting holes on the radios themselves will, will measure. Uh, but uh, ultimately, yeah, they'll be very, very close. And again, Don's done this before, so he understands how to get a pretty close approximation where the holes need to be. Drill them, test fit, and then make them fit a little better. Just do this. Sit this up here to where that this is up here. In this case, it's got to go right there. Okay. And then at this point, uh, Don starts taking one of the screws and finding out which size drill uh, bit we need to use when drilling the holes. And we want the holes to be slightly larger than the screws. So we take a bit that's 11 64ths. Chris puts it into the portable drill press, lines up where the lines intersect, and begins drilling. So this is the first one. So ultimately what we're drilling here is ultimately going to become our template. And uh, that will make the other nine <laughs> that we have to drill a little bit quicker. But this first one we took our time on. And like I said, was it 100% accurate? Uh, no. But when you're doing projects like this, uh, again, 100% accurate is not what you're going for. You're, you're wanting something very close with uh, some thought. And then you can make it fit better. Uh, again, in our case, utilizing a file uh, to just make the holes a little bit bigger in one direction or the other. But we need uh, we have a really good general approximation where those holes need to be. And then we need to create the second set of holes for the top radio, or in this case, the bottom radio. So KY4CKP finishes up drilling the second pair of holes on our mounting plate. And again, just putting the mounting plate together uh, was fun because of all the tools involved that a lot of us don't really get to use very often. Once we get these drilled, we'll take it back over to the bench and do a test fit. Get a screw in the hole. So here we've got uh, KD6FTR uh, mounting one of these mounting plates to the radio just to see how it fits. And sure enough, we had a couple that were too tight, the screws wouldn't quite go in as they should, so we took a file and we elongated one of the holes. And usually the top and the bottom on the same side, we elongated a little bit. And if you look at brackets that you purchase for your radios, you a lot of times will see that one of the holes is in fact elongated that allows you to tilt or whatever you need to do. In our case, we're not worried about the tilt, but uh, just a, a little, little bit wider hole makes the uh, screws go in that much easier. And then we put a couple of the brackets back to back and we'll use the first one. Now that we've got it working really well and measured properly and elongated, we'll use it as a template to mark the others and then we'll go drill the others. What do you think? You but impromptu projects wouldn't be as much fun Ham's Ham's without a little bit of a snack. And so WM4LM created some grilled cheese sandwiches. Ham's without ham? Despite our best. So Chris Udis uses his center punch there and keep that uh, drill bit from walking on him. And now we get to work. So he did most of the drilling and then I took a larger drill bit and started swaging them out a little bit to get, again, some of those rough burrs off of those holes. Uh, how many people have uh, are watching today that you've drilled these holes or done something like that with the tools involved in a burr, or just a rough edge uh, on a piece like this cuts you? And uh, that's, we don't want that. And so uh, we took a, a larger drill bit. You can actually see on the other side of the drill there. And I swaged those new holes that Chris is drilling uh, for the screws. I swaged those out to, to uh, make them smooth. 
you know, we need to do this nine times, ten times, I guess it ended up being for all of the brackets. The original that we used as a template plus nine more to give us five pair. When you've got several people out on work day, everybody gets to get in on the jobs. So now you can kind of see how the radio is, is mounted with our new brackets. Don is measuring three inches from the edge. The uh, board underneath was supplied by KY4 EAR from a project he had done. Might have been a, a house remodel or something like that, but the, he cut these to size for what we needed inside the cases. So now what Don is going to do is measure three inches from that edge, and then the holes that we have uh, in the brackets are going to be used to drill some additional holes in the wood base so we can mount the brackets to that base. Don takes out a trusty drill with a small bit, smaller than what the screws are, but enough to get a good pilot hole. And now we're going to put the wood screws in. Of course, Don has all these screws on hand at Don's Hardware. We'll get one of these mounted, test fit the radio to it, and then also get the other one marked and get the other one mounted. So now Don is got one screw in on the near side, putting in a screw on the far side so we can see what the uh, bracket looks like. And then, uh, yeah, we'll have a, a pretty good idea how our brackets are doing for us. So one of the radios will go on top, as you see here, that Don is test fitting. And the other radio in the crossband setup will go underneath it. And I believe I could have this wrong. Don probably has it straight in his head as to how he would like to do this. But I think the VHF radio will go on top, the 121, and the UHF radio will go on the bottom, the 221, that, uh, that we have cobbled together. For those of you unfamiliar with these ICOMs, uh, maybe haven't seen some of the earlier videos, these are just workhorses. They're tanks. They're really well built, and for a crossband repeater, you don't need a bazillion channels, uh, but they are programmable, and we'll be showing that programming a little later on when we get these ready for uh, testing and for the frequencies we use for the rally. So at this point, we have one of these basically set up. We don't have the second radio in there, but this is a good approximation, and we just need five or six more of these. So Don goes to work on the second one based on all the brackets and the wood base that we have underneath. And you can see he's already got another radio going there. Again, we're measuring three inches from that edge closest to Don. So are we done? No, we are not. But we wanted to show you what we have put together as a proof of concept already. The battery's in place. With We need a better strap. We've got the distribution boxes that we've created. Those are actually in, in really good nick. We've also got the system out of there, top right there, that can give us the amps, the voltage, wattage, and all of that. And we've got the cables in the back and the two radios. And uh, these brackets we didn't create. These are ones that Don already had, but we've created the rest of them. But we still have some missing things. We don't have the thermal switch in there yet that will turn on a fan. The fan's not in there yet. And we may have to actually create some holes in the case just to allow for some ventilation. So... There's still a few more things on the prototype that we still need to incorporate, but boy, are we far enough along now. This is why you want to join a club, folks. You've heard us say it many times in our videos. Clubs allow you to come together like this and build projects for various things that you might want to do, such as races, 5Ks, rallies, and special events in your community. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4 BDP Brian. We hope you enjoy the video. Give us a like and some comments down below. And stay tuned for the next parts in this series. 73.